Da, da, theme song, theme song. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm Tanya. And I'm Nikki. And we are A Thousand Eyes in One, the podcast. The podcast. We're talking oh, we about our harmonies, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wheel of Time, Season 2, Episode 4, Daughter of the Night. To find previous episodes, go to thousandeyespodcast.com. You can also find us on YouTube. A Thousand Eyes of One podcast. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter as Thousand Eyes One, Facebook and Instagram, A Thousand Eyes and One. If you're interested in our speculative fiction book club, that is Wine on an Empty Stomach on Instagram. First impressions? First impressions. I like to see Len with Alana and her warders. I thought it was really sweet that they took her, um, that they took him under their wing, you know, trying to suit his little bondless heart. Um, I didn't expect to see them in such a like familial context, but I really liked that too. Cause you usually get them like in, in the tower or in battle, but like, this is just how they chill on a regular day when they're not like, you know, twinking her. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, we open the episode with Ishamael awakening a forsaken. Ooh, and it's in yes. the old tongue. And one of the first words he says is Lanfear. Like I picked it up immediately. Mm. So I was like, oh. Didn't it look like the ring? Yes. The, the ring, like the bloody version. Yeah. Um, it was I like knew the that chick whatever. from the ring mixed with Carrie yes exactly exactly <laughs> oh they're all gonna laugh at you um, <laughs> i yeah i i didn't know i mean obviously he's up to no good um i love i love seeing the dark friends in the dark in the forsaken channel like yeah it looks kind of really cool. it's a different color me. like kind of exactly. green tinge uh so as soon as he busted that thing open i was like oh no this person can't be good i think I don't know if this was like the first mention of the Forsaken, but I know that mm-hmm. up until I had heard that, you know, whenever they say for the first time was my, the first time I'd ever heard of it, but you know, I just knew they were bad guys. <laughs> yeah, no, they've definitely mentioned the Forsaken before. Mm-hmm. Everyone's afraid of them. Not paying attention. So last episode, when Rand was at that fancy party, fancy he met lad. a lady on Ver. Uh-huh. This episode, one of the first scenes is Lady Anvea in her home getting ready for a day of lounging with a beverage by her window. Giving which... Melisandre. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking just giving Lady of Leisure, which, you know, oh, my I'm career talking goals. about the application of the wig. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but yeah. I want to wake up in out- the morning and get dressed up and you know lay out on my chaise lounge and drink gaze gaze brandy. out the window and drink <laughs> yeah sip brandy and gaze out the window yeah and who's visiting her her much older sister moiraine mm-hmm. holy shit did you see that coming no i had no idea what she was off to i had i mean i know that they hinted at her nobility yes they the have many season. times yeah you know um but I didn't expect her to be so, so posh. I guess, I, although I maybe should have expected it with Lan and his station or whatever, but I didn't, um, yeah, no, I did not expect her to come barreling through, but I thought that bitch was rude as fuck. Like, good morning. I wrote down Moraine being a rude bitch again. Just like, what's wrong with you? It's not even your house. Are you used to it's live It's not here? your house, right. And then she you- goes like, it's been decades. Yeah. Bruh decades decades and what's funny is the that compared to alana where alana clearly goes home for sunday dinner um, <laughs> yeah because <laughs> because of moiraine and made me and because of like Egwene and nynaeve being so far away from home i kept thinking of the Aes Sedai as like being away from their families for good right they're not taking vows to stay away though you know they're just they have a lot of freedom um 
to do what they want, I guess, when the world's not on fire. Right. Um, we did say, I think, last episode that because Lady Anver was named, we might see her again. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, she or we'll see right. other nobility. <laughs> yeah, because we were like, we'll see, we're, we'll probably see the nobility again, and maybe some of the ones who've been named, only because they've been named. So now we have to look out for uh, Master Doman because he was named, and you know he might come up again. Um, in season one when they encounter the children for the first time and Moraine's giving the backstory to give them, she says she's a lady from a fallen house and we know she can't mm, lie. So that was like right. our first, yeah. So that was like our first hint about her noble background. Lady from and it gave a us a tiny house. bit of history. She is a lady from a fallen house. She can't lie. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like how they Thank kind you for of bringing that, that back in. up. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for that <laughs> reminder and callback. Um, I totally forgot about that or just dismissed it. Um, and it also comes up when she's at that meeting with the Amelin. Mm. When, she, when she's, you know, fake accuses Moraine of looking down on her and she's like Lady Moraine Damadred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like your house ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, wow. apparently it, the house fell after she left. Mm-hmm. Um, and Vera had mentioned like after her leaving that their uncle brought the house to ruin. I think it was after her father died, maybe. I don't. After know. After her father died, yeah, because I mentioned the only the mention that they make of her father is that he was like you know loving and kind, and that was the uncle that drove them to shit. Yeah. As they do. No fat uncles that are good. <laughs> So now I wonder how old is Moiraine? So a cool thing that I get why they didn't do it this way. Um, a cool thing is that in the books, the Aes Sedai are considered ageless. Right. So like you can't tell if they're young or old. But like, how would you pull that off without weird facial CGI, right? Mm-hmm. So I kind of... I like that they changed it to just where their aging is just slowed. Because, I mean, their aging is slowed in the books, but they're also just ageless. And that's the thing that gives them away is that you just can't quite pin an age on them. Their faces, like, don't have lines. Um, But, yeah, that would have been absolutely too hard to pull off in a live action. So it makes me wonder if Moraine's sister is that old. I'm not good at placing an age on people yeah i'm terrible at it but she's obviously like an old lady mm-hmm. and you know that she's um that maureen was already older than her because they have that painting right right you see her as a little girl and maureen looks like a grown ass. so girl. maureen looks like she's like seven to ten years older mm-hmm. how old is maureen and then if you think about how old maureen is and the fact that their aging is slowed how old is like the mistress of novices and yeah the, and uh Varen Sedai and uh, Adelaus, you know, like, goodness gracious, these women must be 300 years old. So anyway, Moraine's being a rude bitch again. Mm-hmm. She's just like, get me some horses, get me this wine. Is my room available? Because I'm about to take it. And then it's like ready to storm off. Sister invites her for tea and she says, how about lunch? And storms out. Very rude. Didn't like it. Loved her outfit. <laughs> Ah, I like it. The only notes are manners. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had a I felt uh I felt Anver's anger. You know, your sister's been gone for decades. We don't know how many decades. Um Yeah. It's justified. But it's her been decades. Justified. Yeah, her anger's definitely justified. And what sucks is that we know that Moraine is definitely bringing trouble to her. Mm-hmm. That was the thing that stood out to me the most. Um, you know, it's, I keep talking about what this show, I don't know why this show makes me feel like, like it makes me channel Lord of the Rings, the movies, not the other show on Amazon. Thumbs down, fight me. Um, <laughs> I but, still haven't watched it. <laughs> don't. <laughs> it's like episode two is my favorite one because it's so beautiful but just I don't know 
it was like thin gruel nobody wants to stomach that yeah um and but like like the movies that were exceptional um you know i think about just you know the fellowship bringing trouble behind them trouble's always on their tail Mm -hmm. um nipping at their heels and that's what i think about maureen coming to like how how could you not know that trouble is going to be uh you know you're putting your family in a position you're putting your family in your position just because you haven't seen them in a long time doesn't you know like how and you can't even do anything to stop them (laughs) yeah and it's like why did she go home i mean i know that she has she mentioned she has spies in the area we uh-huh. get into that later when um, <laughs> Alver and checks Anver her. checks her and humbles <laughs> her ass. Uh-huh. Um, we know she's looking for Rand. Well, I guess because she's looking for Rand at Four Gate, and she knows that her old home is near there, so that's why she went home. Right. But I would, I would think instead of going home, just going somewhere nearby, so that you don't bring drama home. But she's also desperate, mm, and maybe kind of doesn't care. Yeah. She doesn't give a shit. I mean, it's all like she's she you know how child Walder Walder is kind of like everything in service to his God. Yeah. Um she's kind of like that too. She's kind of um what's that word? Fanatic. Not fanatic. I guess. No. Uh, yeah, I just like um, Every, everything is is expendable in service of the light, basically. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly including the family she's taken the gospel literally and um and i think that those blinders are what keep setting her up to fuck up as much as she has so she's back in town and she's looking for rand because she wants logaine to train him Mm -hmm. crazy ass logaine crazy ass logaine crazy ass very suicidal logaine because he happily slaps that guild and then red he's been wanting so bad by the way i was where was i and oh i know i was playing D online and mm-hmm. someone asked me if i wanted a drink and i said i asked for a guild and red and they were like a what <laughs> <laughs> i was like Super oh nerd. <laughs> i was like oh sorry i was just watching wheel of time my bad um <laughs> He slaps that wine out of her hand and he wants the knife. Like his mm-hmm. eyes got so hungry. He looked so desperate. Yeah. It was actually terrifying. Like I thought he might kill her. Neither of them can channel. And I don't know how well she can fist fight. Yeah, it's true. You don't know what her one to or hand to hand is like. Um, yeah. And it's it's crazy because you know, this is the same bottle that he just like asked Rand to jump through hoops to get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which he promptly wasted yeah yeah and i i don't know i think it just goes to show just you know how well he know he knows the same pain that she does being cut off from the one power mm-hmm. right yeah he'd rather be dead he'd rather be dead so it's like imagine that you're cut off from the one power and her going through all the depression and just you know the devastation that she's going through but also knowing that you're going to be mad because that's just non-negotiable right yeah and then for Moraine, she's probably feeling those feelings of despair and, you know, suicidal ideations. But she has this mission to finish. Mm-hmm. Nothing's I mean, more we're important. Lucky she has that, right? Yeah, nothing's more important than the mission, right? I thought it was hilarious that as she's going through her room, remembering everything, she found like the old blunt she rolled. <laughs> I was like, so really? It's like, <laughs> like you just that. have some old blunts that are like what 30 years old made me wonder if she'd smoke them i just thought that was really hilarious makes me wonder about her past life right mm-hmm. i liked when um her sister checked her that was my favorite part of the episode <laughs> I, I felt like she needed it mm-hmm. i really yeah. felt like she needed it for someone who's preaching the wheel like weaves as it wills and like you know it keeps the world keeps on turning like she kind of forgot she seems like she forgot, you know, that she'd come home and everything would be just as she left it when her sister, you know, rightly goes on and tells her like, these are all the things that I've achieved and had to deal with while you were gone. Um, right. And, and so, she no, says, your people are not my people. 
And she says that, you know, her father had hoped that Moraine would come back from the tower and help fix things. And Moraine yeah. simply never came back home. So I wonder, too, like, what's in Moraine's past? Why she didn't come home? If her father mm -hmm. is so loving and kind. Right. Um, we don't know about their mother. And, I mean, how bad could her little sister have been? Yeah, there's been no mention of mommy, has there? Not that I re recall, no. Hmm. Maybe she died. In, maybe she died in in childbirth, like all of the moms in A Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> maybe, uh, except the craziest ones. <laughs> <laughs> the craziest ones survived somehow. Um, as we're talking about vows, it makes me also like. Uh, what are the three vows that they take? Not lying, not mm -hmm. attacking with the one power, mm -hmm. and the third one. Yeah, the reason I ask is because I'm thinking of, uh, like, we're, we're talking about them being able to go and visit their families. Um, you know, it's not like the Night's Watch where they have to give up you know, house and name and that kind of stuff. So it does make right, me Right, and that's, that's kind of what I thought it was visit. like. It's what I thought it was like, the Night's Watch, where you just give up your house and your name. Although Benjen visited home, but... Yeah, but you know, he's a ranger and the home was in the north. <laughs> All right, what are the I said I three oaths? But then it also makes me call ah, into to question. Make no, well, sorry, to make no weapon with which one man may kill another. Okay. Oh, that's a good one, actually. Um, it makes me also wonder if they're allowed to, you know, it not that it makes me wonder, it, it makes me question again Leandrin's hiding of her son, right? If they're allowed to visit people. So, you know, like we talked about last time, when did this child come into existence? Mm-hmm. Because apparently it doesn't say they can't have kids. And she said she's been hiding him for 80 or 90 years. Mm. So it's like, she's obviously hiding him from everyone, but is it because she's hiding him from the Reds? Mm -hmm. Are Aes Sedai not allowed to have families? Because I mean, if Greens go off and make husbands of their warders, do they have children? Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> yeah so um Anvir says hey listen that kid you're looking for <laughs> I'll tell you where he is but you got to sit down and be fucking civil you gonna sit down and drink this tea biatch mm -hmm. she yeah. really was like you think you run things I run things mm -hmm. and it's like well yeah Maureen you've been gone a long time she named everybody that Maureen talked to I love that <laughs> <laughs> Me too, because Maureen was so shocked. And it's like, you know, so far we've seen her as like damn near infallible. Right. Because we're seeing her through the eyes of the two rivers folks. And she's like outwitting people and things like that. And then here comes her sister. Mm -hmm. Outdone by your sibling. Isn't mm -hmm. that You're the way it is? sibling at that. I know how much that stings. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen to this that's fine <laughs> we get elias getting giving parent a pep talk about his nature the nature of his existence and you know that he will eventually his eyes will turn yellow and he'll want his meat raw yuck she said steak tartare every night <laughs> <laughs> it can't be good for your digestion Blech. it just can't be we well, also I mean, learned that uh, Elias and the wolves do not go near women who can channel. Smart. He says Very that wise decision. I said I do not trust what they can't understand. Uh -huh. So that goes back to what we were talking about before about her not her not picking up on Perrin having these powers. Yeah, so he learned that he's going to turn into a wolf, but not actually physically transform into a wolf. I got ahead of myself last episode because I had already watched episode four and I mentioned him asking if he'd turn into a wolf and Elias saying, don't be stupid. But that was actually this episode. So my apologies. I guess it wasn't really a spoiler, but yeah. my apologies. Let's talk about Elaine and Egwene and Nynaeve. You know how I feel about Nynaeve. I know she's so annoying, but she's grieving really bad um how long are we going to keep making excuses for her? i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> she's grieving the loss of her child 
and dealing yeah, with it yeah. was it real or not even though she actually experienced it mm-hmm. while in and the then, quantum realm and then suddenly being an accepted and when she did not want to be an Aes Sedai really right and also still not being able to channel that will which again I don't know how you got it's like it's like no child no child left behind (laughs) like just push them forward Uh, we're failing up (laughs) yeah George Bush will pay for his crimes (laughs) did you notice um that when Egwene is I was talking to her and she like gives her the I miss my friend hug and she like um barely the sleeve yeah well, she she doesn't flinch but then the sleeve of her gown it's got all the different colors of the aja yeah, on it. yeah. i love that detail yeah i'm so excited when i saw it i think that's in the books <sighs> i want one <laughs> <laughs> i want one maybe i'll embroider that that's not a bad project. idea yeah so Gwen is do you want you know, I've thought about this a lot, which Aja I would want to be a part of, and I haven't come on, come on a decision. I feel like I'd mm. be in the Browns. That makes sense to me. Chill, that makes sense to me. read books, do research, write papers. Mm. I haven't thought about that until just now. So come back to me next time and I will tell you. Okay. I have to do more research. I like wearing blue and green, though. I, I also do. do enjoy the occasional company of a man. <laughs> so definitely not red really. is out <laughs> yeah red is out i also don't like wearing red so um red is my favorite but i also enjoy the company of men and women so yeah it's a tough one Egwene. i could just um, cosplay as red aja on like feast days <laughs> <laughs> Egwene is really sad that she can't connect with nynaeve Mm-hmm. and I actually feel a little bit bad for her because there's just no way for her to understand what Nynaeve just went through yeah and, and for her to tell I mean and you see that when she hugged her says don't worry it wasn't real it, like that doesn't help does not help like that must have stabbed Nynaeve through the heart oh it's a pain it's the agony. maybe she'll go Wanda Maximoff on us <laughs> if she could ever learn to use her power Ugh. one day <laughs> that fine ass warder comes over to talk to Nynaeve oh, in I the was training like, pits yes I was like hey boo <laughs> hi and she has no interest which Leandrin notices and seems pleased by <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what it did it also it made me wonder if um, I know like Andrew was just like, you know, casually walking around stalking Nynaeve, but it made me wonder if he was a plant. Hmm. I had not yeah. considered that. Did I don't even think we got his name. No, but I just don't trust anything that happens when Leandrin's in a scene. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've basically gotten bad vibes from her since the first time we meet her. Mm-hmm. Like she's just been bad vibes the whole way through. Totally. Leandrin is like if the ways were a person (laughs) speaking of Leandrin she gets that note about the attack on the western shore Mm -hmm. visits Leanne now I wasn't expecting hostility between Leandrin and Leanne I also wasn't expecting Leandrin to care so much about an attack somewhere and wanting to send sisters because that's not really what her Aja does right that would right. be the greens right who are, well no the greens are the ones who are like prepared to battle the final battle Tar Gaidon I think something like that mm-hmm. Tarman Gaidon the last battle so the the greens train for that for life so I don't know if that means they go out and fight other battles right maybe right. If they're not yeah she visits Leanne and kind of low-key threatens her about the Amarin. Yeah. So she has hostility yeah. towards the Amarin, very obviously. Well, yeah, that we that we know. Um, but I don't I thought I thought it was really weird that she didn't see that Leanne didn't seem at all concerned that this attack had happened, you know, and maybe that's coming from from the perspective of having seen it unfold. <laughs> <laughs> you know well Leanne um, said that sisters had been sent to um you know see what was going on 
Yeah, but the Leandrin says, like, have you heard back from them? And she's like, uh... Right. Where's the follow-up reports? That should be concerning, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming she would have sent blues because they're the spies. Yeah, like, why don't we have more information? It's, it seemed urgent to me. And this is, like, one time, like, although I feel like Leandrin was a little bit out of pocket with her attitude, I did also... Um, I'm co I was co-signing her sense of urgency. Yes, yeah. like if this hasn't had like all well, these, that's like, also because we we've that... seen what's what the attacks are. Yeah, so and we, we know, know how bad it is, right? And we also know that there are like you know there's another false dragon from the from other episodes, and things are things are popping off in the realm. Mm -hmm. So why are we not paying attention to this, or just more attention to this? So yeah, but I, I didn't. Yeah, but she kind of threatens her about the Amerlin. If she falls, you'll fall with her. Mm -hmm. which also made me ask where is the Amerlin where does she chill when she's not like having but she sex seemed, she's not her. in the tower though yeah that's what I'm saying like where is she like where does she go when she's not you know banishing people I would think why she, why does the Amerlin at this point even leave the tower mm. I hope we find out where she goes when she's not at home we have to if they're letting us know she's not in the tower we have to find out where she yeah, is but you know what i think that even when we got to the tower in the last season um it wasn't clear that it that the tower was somewhere that she was always you know residing in. it seemed to me that she had returned to the tower from somewhere too well they had but said maybe that she's interpreting that i think so because they had said that uh Egwene had asked how is the seat called the amerlin seat and the woman also called the amerlin seat and she says she mm -hmm. is the seat so that right. made me believe that means she doesn't leave She's part mm. of the tower and the ruler of the tower. And maybe she leaves to like confer with the queen or something. Yeah, I was going to say maybe it's diplomatic missions that she's out on. Just like keeping the high brass, you know, informed or something. Don't know. Let us know because we want, well, don't spoil anything. Yeah, don't spoil but, anything. You know, if you have any useful feedback, holler. One of the things, um, Leandrin in this episode she almost threw me off my guard when she goes mm. and meets Nynaeve at the arches and tells Nynaeve about her son. I was like, whoa, because this whole time I'm like, what does she want from Nynaeve? Like, what is she getting at? You know? And then seeing her actually upset about Nynaeve not coming out of the arches, seeing her mourning Nynaeve and going to melt her ring and all of that. And, you know, saying to Egwene how how upset she was that Nynaeve didn't make it. Although I started to think like, all right, maybe she is, you know, softening towards Nynaeve. And I will, full disclosure, I do know what happens. So I knew what was anyway. eventually going to happen, but I was still sitting there like, Maybe it's different. <laughs> Maybe they change it from the book. <laughs> because I, no matter what, I fall for these traps every time. But it, you know what? Aww. I love it. I love it about myself because it makes me enjoy these shows so much. Right. So I was falling for Landron's uh, little tricks because it seemed like she really liked her. And then she tells her about the invasion and about how- <laughs> See? and how Perrin and Loyal and the Shinarans have been captured. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I felt similar to you. I was like, oh man, she's like, you know, look at her consoling her until she told her about the invasion. Because it seemed manipulative. Like, your friend. Yes, but it seemed course. manipulative, right? When she yeah. mentioned them. Yeah, when she mentioned them. But also I was like, why are you telling her what you lost? I understand that you're vulnerable, but I felt like that would be a secret, like, they they say that whatever happens within the arches you keep to is your experience alone, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that she admitted to her what she lost, I felt was like uh out of the ordinary, definitely. Out of the order, but unwise wisdom. Um, but I also know that, you know, she's not thinking about that. She's, you know, when you're so distracted by something that's sad that you're just like, you know, talking out the side of your mouth, you're not really paying attention to what you're saying. Um, you're just kind of reacting. But Nynaeve also, about your responses. wisdom that she is, also seems to have absolutely no impulse control. And no guile whatsoever. 
was dumped. <laughs> was dumb, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't with her, man. <laughs> I really can't with her. Just but yeah, no, no guys. Um, which is too bad. Like you think she would like if you can't channel, then at least be picking up some other skills while you're in the tower. Please. Right. <laughs> as if to continue with this storyline might as well go all the way through Mm -hmm. it before we move on um so she tells Nynaeve about the attacks and about her friends being captured so Nynaeve decides to go help her go to Falm to get them back which again full disclosure I knew was a trap but was still like "Hmm." um (laughs) (laughs) Egwene and Elaine unwisely decide to follow her and i wonder <sighs> what all right let me talk about manipulation okay if if Nynaeve really gave a shit about Egwene, she would have just dipped out and never came to the room that is true i am so mad that she went back no way she knew Egwene. she knows her she saved her life as a child you know she nursed her through sickness and mm-hmm. yada 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 she knows that she wants to save her friends. And she also knows more than that, she wants to become an Aes Sedai. So why would you tell her? Like, is she this- wanted her to come. Petty? But for what? You're jeopardizing the girl's future. If you really loved her, you would have left her alone. Unless you're like backhanded catty revenge for telling you that what you lost in the tower was nothing, which I don't think she's actually that malicious. No, I don't think she'd be that malicious, especially not to Egwene, but, but it was definitely- Telling her, you know, I'm just, they've captured our friends who we love so much. And I'm just letting you know, cause I'm leaving. Like that definitely was like, come on, you know, you know, she's going to come with you. a note. Leave a note. Yeah, you're right. And then I wonder, because all right, obviously Leandrin is, this was all a trap for Leandrin to knock them unconscious and do who knows what with, right? <laughs> Did Leandrin expect Nynaeve to go get Egwene? Because Leandrin is clearly smart. I know she wasn't expecting Elaine because she even says you complicate things. But she didn't Mm. seem she didn't seem too pressed about Egwene being there. So I wonder if she figured that Nynaeve would go get Egwene and she could get both of them. Interesting. Um, I feel like a little bit of that. Well, I guess we'll talk about that. But um, when when what I I feel that when she said you complicate things i wasn't taking it to be as a you singular daughter heir i thought she meant you you two novices who are not supposed to be here and now i have to take you both out um i, took I didn't it to interpret mean, it as as you know as the daughter you know, political disaster <laughs> yeah i absolutely took it as her meaning the daughter heir mm. because the daughter heir that makes sense is someone yeah. who'll be searched for yeah. So like you can't hurt the daughter heir. Right, 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 right. You definitely would you don't want, you know, because we know that the queen is close with um the tower. Her daughter's Question. been there for many years, comes every summer, right? So we yeah. know that the queen is close with the tower. So she probably and actually that was that would have been book spoiler, so never mind. But we know that she's she's close with the tower. So there's definitely going to be Aes Sedai who are going to help the queen go and find her daughter if her daughter turns yeah. out missing. So yeah. that's why I think she said you complicate things because who's going to look for Egwene? Right, right. Um, hmm. And then my, I guess my question was, because I didn't notice it, I know that she knocked out Egwene and... Um, Elaine? I know that she knocked out Egwene and Elaine, but did she also knock out Nynaeve? I don't think I peeped that because you just yes. see those two. All three of them were knocked the out. Okay, okay. I must have missed that. <sighs> yeah, so back to being bad. <laughs> Leandrin, <laughs> suspicions. So it's like once um, again, confirmed. what the hell is Leandrin up to? What's her game? Use Leandrin to segue into Leandrin and men. Oh yeah. Min is at an inn. 
with Matt. <laughs> Please keep rapping after that. <laughs> <laughs> what she do win? I don't know. She's, <laughs> she's with Matt getting some drinks and she ends up first of all having a nightmare about her auntie so we get like a little bit of her background Mm -hmm. which was really cool I thought a cool way to do it so now we know that her her aunts were using her as like a fortune teller and making money off of her until she escaped yeah until she escaped (laughs) and we learn that uh Leandrin has promised her that she'd help her get rid of her powers gasp because remember, we were like, what does Landrin want with men? We still don't know what she wants with Matt. But now we understand no. why men would be working with her. Mm-hmm. And we learned that men did not know that Leandrin was a dark friend. Because no. how do we know Leandrin's a dark friend? Fucking Ishamael comes to meet men. She yep. sends her to Ishamael. Now, I wondered why Leandrin wouldn't think that men would tell someone that Leandrin is a dark friend or maybe she was expecting Ishamayel to kill her once he got what he wanted. I, hmm. well, I think that upon finding this out and realizing who he is, because he says, did you think, really think that an Aes Sedai would be able to like cure you of this power? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I feel like I would be shooketh you know who am I gonna tell? Like he's try- he uh, he materialized in front of me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know he's he's got a tracker on me. Anything I do, he's probably gonna know about. So I think that you don't tell anybody what's going on. Um, but I did think it was cute that Shay was looking out for Matt, even though you lured him here and you're telling you know you're keep the drinks coming, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, I I was really surprised. I thought that she, because we don't know who she's meeting. She tells the right. We have like, no oh, idea. Know, whatever they're gonna ask for the same room, you know, and I'll just be up there waiting. Um, I wasn't and, expecting a Shamayo. No, me, I definitely wasn't. Um, I was expecting it to be other Reds. I don't know what I was expecting, but I definitely wasn't expecting it to be a Shamayo. I did a double take when he showed up. I was like, wait a second, is she dreaming or is this for real? Because she was just right. You know, it did seem like it was still dreaming. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, he was there. Well, she's gonna take Matt to Kyrian. Oh, that's right. There was a mission. A side mission. Yeah, she's supposed to take Ooh, Matt to Kyrian. We don't know why. And we don't we still don't know what he wants with Matt. Mm-mm. And I don't have any ideas of what he wants with Matt. Unless he thinks like, I don't know, maybe he thinks he can use Matt to get at Rand somehow. Yeah, I was going to say this. Maybe there's some connection based on the vision that she had about Matt and Rand. Oh, right. She did have the vision of uh, Matt stabbing Rand. But also, I mean, I know that you're kind of fucked now because you've already had this, you know, consultation with with a forsaken with a, this forsaken <laughs> but how does she know that like what makes her think that he's actually going to take away her gift her ability her curse right why um, does she believe does the she father know? of lies why does she believe the father of lies and it think that it's not by it's not coincidental it's no coincidence that before she sees before she meets him she's having the nightmare of being forced to tell her visions to people Mm -hmm. right like for me it seems like that's what they're going to use her for lock her in a cage make her watch make her uh, make her look at people so she can see their future because that seems like a very useful tool to have in your you know box definitely and obviously she can't read the forsaken we find out really quickly Mm -hmm. forsaken have no future dun 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 (laughs) Let us talk about Alana um, and Lan. Maxim, yeah. Maxim and Ivan are closely watching Lan because they're worried about him hurting himself because of his mm-hmm. lost bond. Alana points out that the bond wasn't snatched from him. She took it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she doesn't think he's going to kill himself. Yeah. Um. And we find out that Alana masks her bond with Maxime all the time. 
all the time. That was such a surprise. It was a surprise. But I kind of understood it. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how do you do a thruple when you're like yeah. bonded through your minds? Yeah, especially when, you know, this the third, I don't want to call him the third, but especially when he- I mean, he kind of is the love. third. He is a third. Okay, so he's the third, but he was not in love with Alana. <laughs> no, he was in love with Ivan and Ivan was in love with Alana. So now it's like, he is the third, like Ivan's in love with yeah. Alana. I don't know how Alana really feels about either of them love-wise. We know she absolutely mm-hmm. loves them in bed. Yes. I don't know how she feels about them emotionally, but Ivan is in love with her. She obviously knows that. And mm-hmm. Maxime really came along because he was in love with Ivan. So yeah, he's definitely the third. Yeah. He's the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> we kept asking if um, Moiraine lost the bond because of her being either stilled or I'm still holding on to she's just being shielded, but um, I'm still holding on. I'm holding on because I want that to be the case so bad. <laughs> I'm going to hold on forever. Let me have my faith. This is like you with the blackfish. Let me have Black my fish, faith. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Let me have, yeah. let me hold on to this. I think she's been shielded, not stilled. Fair enough. But Fair it enough. made me wonder if that makes her, did that make her lose the bond? Because if she doesn't have the one power, how is she still masking the bond and it's like i just don't Mm. understand the one power i have so many questions about the one power but i imagine everyone does right in world so yeah i wonder if she is still masking it or if it's gone because he said she'd been masking it for six months or so Mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know i don't know but it's something to think about yeah i guess it is something to think about but it would seem that if you can yeah it seems like it's a something that comes from the one power the yeah that's what that. i that's what i would have thought we do see lan go back and read that paper he took out of maureen's bag the but did the, he understand it right the poem he got from master doman mm-hmm. for anyone who may not remember um i that was my question is did he understand it i don't know if he did maxime while trying to meditate can't so (laughs) it's interesting in the in the (laughs) subtitle it said like maxine moaned softly or something like that so i was like did he just like Mm -hmm. run off to go have sex oh i I don't know it said i didn't hear anything but in this in the subtitles it said something like that like he moaned softly or grunt softly or something like Mm. that anyway that's beside the point just not out of frustration for not being able to meditate maybe but it was long Mm. after he was gone and then interesting I didn't hear anything. I mean, I didn't turn my TV on blast either, but yeah, no. Anyway, my point being, he goes to mind Lan's business Mm -hmm. to go see what Lan has hidden in that bag. Because when Lan was tucking it back away, Maxine was entering the room to ask him to help him get water. Right. Um, We also, (laughs) before we get into that, we also have the conversation with Ivan where he tells him how (laughs) Moraine said they were never equals and Ivan just laughs at him yeah i know he's getting tired of being laughed at i know poor land but i think that was absolutely necessary yeah they were never equals and land's gonna have to deal with that anyway this poem alana reads it it turns out to essentially be the words that ishamael was saying in the opening of the episode Mm. yeah it's a forsaken riser and it's the poem that was on this thing where that broken heartstone came from Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and obviously heartstone doesn't break not even with the one power so the combination of that poem plus the broken heartstone is what told moraine that landfair had been released so she has been released right. from all the way back then. And that's why she was in such a rush to leave, not because the fades were coming. Because she Thank you, mathematician Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> that shit adds up now. <laughs> yeah, like she put it, she put it together. She saw the the prophecy. She understands the old tongue. Mm-hmm. She read the prophecy. She sees the broken heart stone you know she sees all this fade activity etc 
she already knows the dark one has his eye on her, but this is what tells her that meeting with Master Doman is what told her that Lanfair was on the loose. Right, right, right. And now Alana knows, and they don't want Lan to know. And I wonder, is it because they think that, um, do they think that Lan will do something stupid? Are they and worried for his be safety? Reckless? I mean, I would be. He hasn't, you know, shown the best judgment when it comes to Maureen. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, he would probably rush off. I think it's, but I think it's for his own good that they don't tell him. He doesn't need to know. He can't. What can he do? No, Lan would. No, Lan is reckless. I mean, not that he's reckless, but you know, he really cares. Yeah, I don't her. think he's reckless, but I do think he's absolutely willing to put himself in danger for Maureen. That's his vow that he swore. Yeah, he's supposed to be willing to die for her, and he is. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was kind of Alana to let him know that Nynaeve was entering the arches, which I also absolutely just jumped the gun on last episode. So apologies for that, too. <laughs> My bad. He did not know yet during um, Nynaeve's vision where she sees him coming back to the tower. I had said that he it made sense because he knows that she was going to enter the arches, that he would be on the way right. back. But I had jumped ahead and I apologize because I was an episode ahead. My bad. See, we have accountability on this podcast, guys. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. So Alana reads the prophecy. She knows what it means. Land fair is free. Now, what they did here, I thought was great. As she's reading the prophecy, we know that Rand and Celine are on their little cabin getaway vacation. Uh, you know, I have issues with that, but you know, <laughs> what are your issues with that? With him being on vacation? It's, just, it, it's not that my issues with him being on vacation, but because I've been suspicious for, of her from the very start, I'm like, mm-hmm. why would you go alone to a cabin in the woods with the woman? And then she told you that she lied about when she was there. And then she told you she lied about who she was there with. Like, yeah, that that is a lot this of her, lies. This is <laughs> that, that this was her former smash den. Like, yeah, how do you feel about that? With her with her previous work. Mm-hmm. Anyway, whatever. Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> they're on, they're on their little vacation. Rand and uh, they're on their little vacation, and a fade shows up. Now, again, full disclosure, I did know who Celine was. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to spoil it, obviously. I did not. And that's great. Isn't that what makes it great? That's why I don't spoil things. Like the realization and when it all comes together. Anyway, um, I found it very trifling of her. Well, she she is trifling in general. Mm -hmm. But when Rand kills the Fade that comes to attack, he kills her. He kills it by channeling and ripping it, bursting it into flames. Well, not even bursting it into flames, making it burn from the inside out. Isn't it crazy how he has more control than Nynaeve? Ain't that about a bitch? (laughs) And, but she gets all like, oh my God, you can channel? When in the previous episode, he was channeling and she could see it and was telling me, telling him, show me, show me. Yeah, I felt like that was a shitty shit. Like somebody forgot. (laughs) Either somebody forgot or Rand is really that green. Because poor Rand, he's so green. That sweet Mm -hmm. summer child. He just has no idea what's going on with him. And it's so easy for her to manipulate him. Like, I mean, this Mm -hmm. must be the lightest work possible. (laughs) And we, Uh. you know, he confesses his love for her. And I'm like, bro, you're in love already for somebody who you about manipulation. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So remember where they're like on that cliff taking in the view. Mm -hmm. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, this is a setup. This is a setup. She brought him somewhere that's going to remind him of his homeland, right? He knows where she's from. She knows where he's from. She's worldly, you know? Mm -hmm. People know what the two rivers is like. So there's that. And then she tells him 
this fucking fairy tale about how she was he was in love how she was in love with this person and like they they they'd go to this place where they could be alone and it felt like they were the only two and they could stay there forever and i'm like what the fuck do you not recognize your own story in this and and she's like oh you know um it's just like word for like he could you could see him placing himself in her story right because it's his story right um and then at the end, he's like, you know, she's like, well, you're so young, you have no experience. And he's like, you'd be surprised. And in my head, I was like, he's so naive. He's so like, naive. Your one love, the one love you had in your life. Yeah. That's cute. Um, and so, yeah, my hackles were up because of that, too. I'm like, were you, you're not sensing any danger? Like, and also, I mean, this is something that, we, that we're obviously going to keep, keep talking about. But just like the naivete of the kids from the two rivers, mm-hmm. right? Like they have, they're, they are taking everybody at face value because that's what it's like in their community. You right. know, people just are fucking real. No, people tell the truth. There's no motivation for you to do, you know, other than Matt stealing to like provide for his little sisters, right? Because his dad's a fucking wastrel. Mm-hmm. Um, but you just, we keep seeing it over and over and over again that, you know, these kids, like anything could happen. To them. <laughs> like, yes, they've come of them. age, but they're kids. They're, they're really kids. kids and that includes Nynaeve yes she's 25 but like she's Nynaeve. she's also <laughs> just as naive Nynaeve <laughs> she's mm-hmm. also just as naive as the rest of them and I feel like with her it comes through in her insolence and her unwillingness to listen to anyone absolutely absolutely um absolutely but all of this goes back to what I was saying about a lot of small pond syndrome for her. Yeah. And now she's a little tiny minnow in shark infested waters. Mm-hmm. Bringing it back to Alana now reading this prophecy and the way they showed her reading the prophecy, saying the words that Ishmael had said in the beginning of the episode, except she's translating them basically. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we're getting the shots back and forth of this forsaken being brought back with mm-hmm. land uh, with Celine tying up Rand and also like slowly getting back up. And it's that moment Meow. of like Celine is land fair. And yes. how did you feel? Very well done. How did you feel? Um, well, I was just like, Oh my, I, and I recognize the motion. Um, they were familiar to me, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but it's just like as soon as I I was I've been suspicious of her the whole time. Yeah, I mean she was very <laughs> so, suspicious, you know. So I wasn't surprised. I was like, you gonna let her tie you up, really? After all this bullshit she just served you, like for real. Like she recovered has too he, quickly. Has she ever tied you up before? She recovered like, too quickly from learning that she's with a man who can channel and from being in a fade yeah. attack. Yeah, a normal I mean, person. if you wanted to fuck after a fade attack, I understand. Like we're both still alive, survival sex. But she was way too chill after a fade attack she should be shaking she almost fell off Mm -hmm. a cliff and a fade almost killed them a normal person would be chilled to the bone and be really really fucked up for at least a little while oh my god yes you know but no he's like oh we're gonna have vacation sex and (sighs) the way she turned it on him and he's like you're the only woman who's ever seen me as a man and she's like i want you need somebody who can love all of you and I was like oh my god Rand open your eyes but he's so <sighs> green he's so green and he's like he be- he believes in love we know that yeah right? we know that he believes in love and it, it when you are there is something very potent about being loved as you are as an adult for the first time mm-hmm. you know I get it Rand don't tell anybody guys i'm a secret romantic but like i get it i get it um but still that bitch is mad sus i'm best yes she is <laughs> mad sus and then she starts tweaking out he's like what's happening yeah, i wondered <laughs> what was she about to do because she says i'm a monster too and then her body starts doing that weird shivery mm-hmm. you know that glitchy shit <laughs> yeah she starts <laughs> exactly she starts glitching what do you think she was he's about just to do? like i don't know do you know what it reminds me of um so i you know i just started reading american gods and you know there's that scene in that i haven't watched i watched like 20 minutes of the first episode of the show right um but there's this in the book there's a scene where the man goes into the hotel room with the woman 
and like she like ends up like her pussy eats him yes and it reminds me of that I was like I don't know if this is gonna happen but that's the first thing that came to mind (laughs) it looked like she was gonna transform so maybe she has another right I don't know I actually don't have an answer for you for that but maybe she has another form that's like her true form I would imagine Mm. it's like a human because Ishamayel just looks well no Ishamayel had that those weird fiery eyes and that like Mm. wooden oh that's stone right kind he had of the face. Voldemort face with the fire yeah, eyes yeah so I wonder if she was going to transform into like her true form and show it to him while he's all tied up mm-hmm. but then it begs the question if she wants him to be in love with her and she wants him like on her side why show him your true monstrosity if that's what it was if that's what it was um I mean because he's taking it back he's like wait what do you mean you're a monster too I thought you said that it was cool <laughs> yeah he's like huh like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well we I don't podcasting with you <laughs> <laughs> well we don't find out what she was gonna do because here comes moiraine who has been on the road since master mm-hmm. her meeting with master doman and nearly getting killed she missed the do not disturb sign or the sock on the door <laughs> and and rand you know rand all of the blood in his brain has gone straight to his dick and then mm-hmm. uh celine slash landfair is so focused on whatever type of transformation she was about to do nobody hears moraine come in just suddenly there's mm-hmm. a knife through her chest and the fact that she stabbed her through the chest and then immediately slit her throat <laughs> to like Dude, make sure I the was job so was scared. done <laughs> was like oh shit Marie, two shots to the head terrifying double homicide Mm-mm. you know what makes me think before we before we move on is that does that mean because we, you know, like in stories or whatever, like people are vulnerable in mid mid transformation. Mm. You know, like does that mean if if Ishmael is going to transform to his other self, does that mean that there's a loophole and that he could be killed mid transformation? Do we need to be looking out for that? Because it seems to me that you know she would have been able to defend herself had she you know been paying more attention. No, she definitely would have been able to defend herself because one, Maureen no longer has use of the one power. And two, Mm -hmm. we know that the Forsaken, their use of the one power is from 3000 years ago. So they're stronger than like every Aes Sedai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like old vampires. But the last shot we get is her blinking and breathing. Mm -hmm. So Maureen was right. Because, you know, Rand gets all like, you killed her and throws her up against the you wall. You killed her. And Let like me choke upset. you out. I'm going to use my powers on you. Well. And she was like, no, I didn't. She's Lanfair. And he's like, what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> and you know what the crazy thing is? Like, all of all the crazy things that happened in the fact that, you know, Moraine killed her twice, like two death blows, was that she was like, we need to fucking run. <laughs> right. <laughs> we still feel need, the to, need run. to run. Why are you still fucking standing here given uh what's his name not Dumbledore the other one Gandalf (laughs) (laughs) run (laughs) yeah she yes yeah that just tells you how terrifying Lanfair is Mm -hmm. that bitch is strong she's extremely strong and I don't think Moraine was afraid because she doesn't have the one power like she's just genuinely terrified because Lanfair she she says is the strongest of the Forsaken Mm -hmm. Which brings me back to if you're if the Forsaken is in mid transformation, does that mean they're extra vulnerable? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, one that I don't have the answer to. So, you know, the other thing that that the other thing that gave it away that gave away to me that she was who she was once I I think I can't remember sometime in episode besides me thinking that she was sus is that this episode is called daughter of the night mm, yeah. and Celine is Greek for moon I didn't know that yeah, yeah. I did not That's know why that. I named my cat's name yeah it comes from the Greek for moon and the moon is the daughter of the night in some lore wow so I guess people who knew that picked up right away I was not one of those people <laughs> Shout out to my Greek and Latin roots teacher from college. He meets her in a different way in the books. He oh. meets her like running away from like some monsters and he like saves her life. Oh, damsel in distress. Right. Trope. And he like saves her mm. life and she's like some lady who's lost and you know he doesn't ask a whole lot of questions and 
they're not mm. like a, they're not like a couple sleeping together but she's absolutely trying to seduce him and she does like the whole damsel in distress thing and he goes out of his way to like be helpful and save her and protect her and all of that so uh. they cut they cut all that out well that's where we leave off celine slash landfair is not dead Moraine and Rand. Running for our lives. <laughs> yeah, Moraine and Rand are running for their lives. Alana knows about the prophecy. Um, Leandrin Nynaeve, is a trifling ass bitch. Leandrin selling people down the river. Is a treacherous bitch. Um, Elaine, Egwene, and Nynaeve are all unconscious, and we don't know what's going to happen to them. We just know that Leandrin okay. has turned on them. And the Emerlin is not Surprise! in the tower. <laughs> and the Emerlin's not in the tower. So there's like a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. And Perrin knows how to talk to wolves. <laughs> or at least knows oh, how to understand what the wolves are saying to him. Yeah. And we start to feel sorry for Matt because clearly he's getting gained. Poor Matt. Poor, poor Matt. Poor Matt. He's just like a small town, low stakes hustler. He's not built mm-hmm. for this type of well, shit. My son's a trend because none of them are. <laughs> No, and it's fair because where they're from, they're so far away from like everyone else. They're really secluded Mm -hmm. and they don't know what's going on. They don't have Twitter. Like they have no (laughs) they have no idea what's going on in other parts of the world. The towers have not yet arrived with the fiber optics. Yeah. So I guess we'll see we'll probably see a lot more of how the naivety gets them into trouble. Like imagine Pat and Fane being your only source of news. get me started talk about him. the master of disinformation oh my god oh wait sorry that's ishmael but yeah, Father of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, anyway to find previous episodes go to thousand eyes podcast.com you can also find us on youtube a thousand eyes in one podcast and if you'd like to follow us on social media we're on twitter as thousand eyes one facebook and instagram a thousand eyes in one If you're interested in our speculative fiction book club, that is Wine on an Empty Stomach on Instagram. I've been Tanya. I'm always Nikki. We'll talk to you next time. (laughs) Bye.